We're here on the hill of Fahert, just outside Dundalk in County Louth. And this site has lots of historical associations, but it also has one very strong literary association with Cúchulainn. A lot of the stories about Cúchulainn and the other stories in the Ulster Cycle, they take place in this part of Ireland, around the Cooley Peninsula. And this place, the Hill of Fahert, is where Cúchulainn fought off 14 of the men of Connacht. They threw spears at him all together at the same time, 14 spears coming at him, and he managed to throw them all back and to kill the 14 Connacht men. It's like something from a Marvel movie. And then in the Thorn Bo Coolne, the battle raid of Cooley, which is the main story of the Ulster Cycle, in the Thorn at that point, a little poem is introduced and it begins, Fochherd, good skill. And it talks about the skill of Cúchulainn, who had such martial prowess. Cúchulainn is a hero who many of us learnt about in school. And we love to read about his, his arrogance, his confidence, his competence, and just how, how good he is at hurling, for example, how good he is in his chariot and so on. He's like a Superman figure from early Irish literature. But very often, he's presented as a kind of a purely pagan character, as if when we read these stories, we're somehow back in pre-Christian Ireland, and that we have a kind of a privileged access to Ireland before Christianity. In fact, the stories of Cúchulainn, the earliest source, the written sources that we have for them, are in 12th century manuscripts, all of which were written in monasteries. And it's thought by some scholars that the Thorn, for example, was first written down in Bangor Abbey, in what is now County Down, so in a thoroughly Christian, thoroughly monastic environment. It's probable that there were many oral stories being passed around about these figures from legendary history as well before that, uh, but they're written down and retold and reshaped in thoroughly Christian contexts. And so the oral tradition is merged with two other traditions. The tradition of the classical world, Greece and Rome. So in some stories about Cúchulainn, there are characters who have names that are clearly drawn from ancient Greek and Roman epic literature and the biblical tradition. So, for example, the death of Cúchulainn, famously represented at the GPO, there are many parallels between that scene and Christ on the cross. And this is brought out further in some of the early Irish annals, which link events in the life of Cúchulainn with events in the life of Christ, historically. As well as that, scholars have recently pointed out, especially one named Vareza Laser, she pointed out links between the biblical character Samson and Cúchulainn. Both of them are kind of Superman figures, strongman heroes, but they also have moments of weakness associated with women. Every Superman has his kryptonite. And finally, uh, another scholar, Lizzie Boyle, has pointed out the links between Cúchulainn and King David, especially young David. And this actually works in the other way. So there are stories, retellings of King David in, Irish, in the Irish language, which clearly borrow from the Cúchulainn stories. So for example, when David fights Goliath, in the Irish version of the story, when David fights Goliath, it's not on a plain, as it is in the Bible, but at a ford in a river, which is of course where Cúchulainn fights so many of his single combat battles. But it works back the way too, and it seems that some of the scenes we find in stories about Cúchulainn are drawn from biblical scenes about King David, especially the friendship between David and Jonathan being mirrored in the friendship between Cúchulainn and Ferdia. So, it might surprise us, but it seems to be the case that Cúchulainn, as much as being a pagan figure, is a figure of Christian culture too.